What's up guys, it's Jim Tay. I've always been real estate, but today I want to touch on something that lies on the opposite end of the investment spectrum. Stocks and shares. In particular, Grab, a popular app that we in Southeast Asia should be very familiar with. What prompted me was this article released about a week ago on Grab's slowing growth, with CEO Anthony Tan having to reassure investors where, following a blockbuster IPO in December last year, the company's share price has fallen about 80%. Personally, Grab is an app that I use very often as well and it's definitely a company I'd consider investing in. However, I didn't enter during the IPO, but after this big drop, I think it's time and I want to take a deeper look to see if it's worth investing in now. And as it turns out, I'm still not so convinced. So in this video, I'm going to tell you why. But before I go further, remember that this is not financial advice and is meant to only be used for entertainment purposes only. If you enjoy such content by me, in addition to my usual real estate stuff, make sure you let me know by hitting the like button, leave a comment, give me some feedback, and definitely subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. With that said, let's dive right in. First, just how well do we know Grab? In a short 10 years, the company has grown its footprint from a single country and city to across most of Southeast Asia covering 8 countries and more than 480 cities and counting. And guess what? Despite having roots in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, Singapore is today the biggest revenue contributor to Grab. Grab builds itself as the number one super app where you can do pretty much everything you need in a day. Although Grab seems to have grown much over the last decade, in the bigger picture, we are still in the early innings as according to research from Euromonitor, there is still huge growth potential in the key markets Grab operates in. Furthermore, Southeast Asia has a lot to catch up with our more developed peers when it comes to online penetration. As a long-term investor, that's something I look out for as I want to make sure the businesses I invest in have a long growth runway. Next, how does Grab make money? Much like how I earn in my main business as a real estate agent through commissions when I connect buyers and sellers or landlords and tenants, similarly Grab primarily also functions as a middleman. In connecting passengers and drivers for its mobility segment, and consumers and merchants for its delivery segment, earning a commission in the process. A marketplace like this takes a large volume of users to be effective, as you can't have one without the other. Drivers without passengers, nor passengers without drivers. It's like a chicken and egg situation. That's it, Grab was very aggressive, and still is from time to time, as I'll touch on later, with incentives given to attract users to this platform. I think we all have benefited from these incentives if we are a Grab user. This comes in the form of discounts to consumers and bonuses to merchants and drivers for fulfilling demand. In this aspect, I must say that Grab has done very well with their customer acquisition and increasing their mind share with consumers, with the word Grab pretty much becoming part of our vocabulary. Hey, let's order Grab, which means to order food, or no car, just Grab la, which means to call for transportation. If you're curious to see in detail how the incentives actually flow for a transaction, I have these two screenshots from Grab's annual report where you can pause the video and look deeper. Now let's move on to the numbers, taken from the latest quarter 2 reporting of this year announced in late August. With having a critical mass of users so important to Grab's business, it's nice to see monthly transacting users trending back to pre-pandemic levels in 2019 following a sharp decline in early 2020. And also a larger percentage of users engaging with two or more of Grab's offerings. Revenue increased by 79% year-on-year, GMV, gross merchandising value by 30% year-on-year, and GMV per transacting user by 16% year-on-year. Nice that incentives as a percentage of GMV has also dropped and adjusted EBITDA margin has been improving. On surface, it looks really decent. But as we know, these presentation reports are meant to show the beautiful side of the company. If it all was really so good, why has the share price tanked so much? Let's dig further. While I certainly expect high growth companies like Grab to be operating at a net income loss as they spend to increase market share, I found that even at the gross profit level, Grab is loss making. If you're thinking it's because of the generous incentives that Grab offers, it's not because revenue is reported net of incentives. 
As such, it's possible to have negative revenues. In fact, in 2019, the first publicly reported revenues for Grab, they were negative 845 million. And even as recently as fourth quarter 2021, just late last year, the delivery segment, Grab's largest by GMV, had a 98% year-on-year revenue decline to 1 million, largely due to incentives. This presents unpredictability I don't really like to see as an investor. On the other hand, when we look at mobility, good news is it's adjusted EBITDA positive and GMV is steadily increasing to pre-pandemic levels while margins are much improved. However, it seems like the commission rate has dropped by 50 basis points to 23.2% this quarter from 23.7% in the same quarter last year. This could be because of the intense competition Grab faces in this segment with Gojek being a viable alternative in Singapore and big market Indonesia, also with Comfort Delgro mounting a comeback. Anyone heard of Zik, Z-I-Q? You should check it out because they're offering $5 off for new users. In fact, I just booked one for my parents last week. Not sponsored. Moving on now to risks. Grab has definitely been a game changer and will continue to make inroads into a rapidly digitalizing Southeast Asia. But as I mentioned earlier, their segments are really competitive and consumers are also price sensitive. Talking about price, they can be really high, especially with surge pricing during rainy days, peak hours or festive seasons. A friend of mine said this, passengers would probably be much better off without Grab. It certainly wasn't the first, nor would I expect it to be the last time seeing such negative comments on a company's operations. To some extent, this reminds me of US company Groupon, which was then a game changer in introducing group coupon deals to consumers. They both have a green logo and made headlines in their stock market debut. I studied Groupon as a part of a case study in university and realized that one reason for its failure was intense competition. Consumers were free to use Groupon, all in the Singapore context, all Deuce Asia, Deuce Street, or any of the other hundreds of coupon sites in existence at that time. Similarly, although competitors are less with higher barriers of entry for marketplace business, consumers across Southeast Asia also have a variety of choices when it comes to fulfilling their delivery and mobility needs. Groupon stock, as we see, never recovered. We hope the same thing doesn't happen with Grab. Moreover, both the delivery and mobility segments at the moment requires vehicles and drivers on the road. In my view, these are areas that will be disrupted in the not too distant future with autonomous driving and drone deliveries becoming a reality. These developments can have serious impact on Grab's business as a going concern. For my closing thoughts, I think a lot of premium in Grab's valuation comes down to the integration as a super app. Because when you look at the segments on a standalone basis, similar companies have a much lower valuation. And one of the reasons that made the app stick was its Grab Pay, Grab Wallet, and Grab Rewards, where users can use the app to make a variety of payments for both Grab services as well as to other merchants, and in the process accruing Grab Rewards. For some time, this was really attractive as users could double deep on these rewards, earning credit card bonuses when they top up, and earning Grab rewards when they pay using Grab. Unfortunately though, Grab has been progressively nerfing these rewards until now, where as popular blog site Mao Lion put it, this is the final nail in the Grab rewards coffin. Unlike another well-known super app WeChat or Weixing as it's known in China, the Grab app lacks the social aspect that keeps users glued to it. Personally, I was a Grab Wallet user but have been using it less through these nerfs. With that said, despite its share price falling off a cliff, Grab still trades at a current valuation of almost 12 times sales. In context, Uber is only 2 times sales in comparison. Coupled with looming risks still in the general market, this is a name I still want to sit up on. To me, there are better growth companies to invest in and I'd wait to see how their plans to turn profitable come along as well as to see if the Grab Digibank arm can gain good traction. With that said, I've come to the end of my sharing on Grab. 
a reminder that it's my first time doing this. So if you like it and want to see more of such content, please smash the like button. I would really appreciate it. Leave some comments, ask questions, I'll answer them. Give me feedback and make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss my next upload. I'm Jim Tay and I'll see you next time.